we can just start, though, just painting the picture, if we may. I know it's a difficult situation for you, being forced into the spotlight at very short notice, but could you just give us an insight as to how things have unfolded over the last 24 hours? Yeah, just got a phone call last night uh, from Alan explaining the situation, and uh, and then Terry rang me afterwards and said, you know, along with Keith and Dean, just prepare the team as best we can for uh, for the upcoming fixture against West Ham. So. And how were the players informed today? Uh, they were told by Richard and Terry. How did they respond to that? Well, they knew anyway because obviously they'd seen it on television and local media yesterday so it wasn't a shock or a surprise I think they've got over that and they came into work which is what we do I know a number of the players have been very supportive of Alan particularly after the Stoke game Jolie and Lescott for example said blame us don't blame the manager do you think some of the players were feeling a little low today the fact that the performances have led to the departure of Alan well I think you'd have to ask them that but I'm, I'm sure they were you know they've got a lot of respect for Alan a terrific person First and foremost, terrific man and uh, and an excellent coach. So, um, but they know they're professional people. So we get on with our jobs, which is exactly what Ireland would want us to do, and uh, try and get a result and, and prepare as best we can to go and win it uh, or get a result at West Ham. And Rob, it's a little bit more personal for you because, of course, you've worked with Alan in a number of mm -hmm. clubs and you've got a very very strong relationship. How are you mm -hmm. feeling? Well, obviously disappointed, and uh, but I know he'd want us to. To carry on and uh, and as I say, prepare as best we can and and get on with our work. It's exactly what he wants, so that's what we'll do. Professional people, so we'll get on with it. Did you chat with Alan briefly? But I think he had we had other things and other things he needed to do. So obviously, I had a brief conversation with him. But um, I speak to Alan all the time. So and just finally, how were his emotions? Well, you have to ask him that. It was a it was a brief conversation. He told me what I needed to know and uh, move on. We'll we'll talk properly. You know. <coughs> when when the time's right. He's very much considered within the game to be a real gentleman. You must really feel for him because he hasn't had a great deal of time to get the job done here. There's a lot of unfinished business. Yeah, I do have a lot of time for him. <laughs> um, just to look ahead to uh, the game that I know that you want to talk about and the yeah. game that, of course, you're in caretaker charge for. Well, uh, along with Keith and Dean, yeah. Of course. First of all, tell me about team news, bumps and bruises, injuries. We're, we're relatively healthy from the Stoke game. Um, we've used again today as a, as a sort of recovery day. Um, we've done the preparation work anyway, but Alan had put a lot of that in place, uh, obviously, previously. Uh, we, you know, we looked at the games as a whole, you know, this four-game period that everybody's going to do. You plan as best you can, but, you know, they're human beings. They might be ill, they might pick up a knock. Uh, the more energy wise you look at each different one so um, we've just prepared uh, as as we would have done really with Alan you know he, he'd done an outline plan of what we were going to do and uh, and it was the right thing to do so that's what we've continued to do but you don't envisage making many changes to the plan that Alan had put in place in terms of starting 11 etc now we'd got we'd got a general outline of of the different opponents and the different ways that we were going to play uh, or, you know or compete with them so um, we'll stick to that can I just ask you about West Ham? Because obviously yourself and the rest of the backroom team would have studied them carefully. Mm. Have you been surprised how well they've done this season? Uh, not really, no, because uh, you know, I know that uh, I know Sam Allardyce, uh, obviously his work, I don't know him very well, but I know Neil McDonnell well. And, uh, and you know, the, 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 they've moved forward, they've moved it on again. And... Um, you know, they, they, people think you know, they, they, you know, they put balls in your box to do this, but they've got other th other parts and assets to the game that are the, that make them really difficult opponents. So um, I'm not overly surprised now. Where would they be uh, particularly dangerous? Rob? Well, they ask questions of you, in, you know, in your last third. You know that, that you know they're different. You know, they're, they're very good from balls into your box. Obviously, with Andy Carroll and one or two others who are good, they're, they're decent tough set plays. They've got some. They've got some good individual players. Um, but so have we. So you know, we're obviously we're aware of their threats. We're aware of what they're capable of doing. We only played them a month ago. So um, and it was it was a good game. We felt it was a game we felt we should have got something out of. Um, so we're aware of those threats. But we've got threats of our own. So we'll um, you know while being aware of what they can do, we've also got some weapons ourselves that we'll try and try and work on. How do you rate the job that Sam Allardyce is doing? That he's doing a fantastic job there. Fantastic job. Rob, can I just ask you about the mood over the last couple of days in the camp? 
Yeah. <laughs> What's it been like? Um, well, we've just got on with it. Obviously, disappointing today, but um, you know, it, well, there's a sense of disappointment. But we're all professional, and we'll get over it, and uh, as, uh, you know, as quickly as we can, uh, and move on and prepare for this game, which is which is all we can really do. Have there been any strong leadership voices within the group? Yeah, rallying calls. Well, well they're, they're a generally you know, they're a good good set of players, good set of individuals. So yeah, they've been fine. They've been you know. They, are they disappointed? Yeah, they are, you know. But um, but as I know, we've got a game against West Ham in a couple of days' time, so we've got to get ready for that. As I said before, because that's that's what we do. That's what Alan Alan had want. We're all professional people, so we get on with it. I'm not going to ask you about individuals because I know I wouldn't get a response. But could I just ask you just generally about the process? How important is it that the club acts quickly and appoints a permanent head coach stroke manager? Well, you'd have to ask the people at the club that. Um, we'll get on with it today, and we'll get on with it tomorrow until we're told otherwise. That's then that's that's how you work in football. People at clubs will know that, so we just get on with it. You know, the, that's for other people. And in terms of just a view from yourself, a, a, a seasoned veteran within the game, vast experience. Well, since I've been called a veteran. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, the club is about to appoint a fifth head coach, stroke manager, whatever. Um, in around about 12 months' time. How important is it that the next man is the right man, for stability's sake? Well, I think I think any club that appoints a new manager, it's important to get the right person. That's just common sense. So just like any other football club that's appointing, or any, any job that's appointing someone to lead it, it's important to get it right. And, Rob, do you hope that you will be part of that going forward? Have you been given any assurances about yourself? I've just been told to get on with the West Ham game, so that's what I'll do. And just finally, can I just ask you about your emotions going into this? Because, of course, we know that you've been a manager in your own right at Leicester City, but you've also had other times where you've stepped into the breach and been mm. a caretaker manager with Alan. Describe your emotions going into this fixture. It's a big game. It's a big Premier League mm. game. You're going into your first game as a manager in the Premier League. Would that be right? Well, first, it's not me. It's, I'm, I'm part of a team that's that's organising. So it's and it and it's not about me. So you learn to move that on. It's about the most important thing are the players, obviously, the supporters and people at the club. Um, so you know how I feel is really irrelevant. You know, you just move on and we'll deal with it. As I said, as professionally as we possibly can. So how I feel is really not important. But within that leadership group. You will be the leading voice. You are the person they put forward today. Is it as an experience that you're looking forward to? Um, it's an experience I've been asked to do, so I get on with it. Um, and as I said, along with Keith and Dean, we'll, we'll get on with it to the best of our ability. It's what Alan would want. And uh, and we'll, we'll do as well as we possibly can to go and get a, get a result down at West Ham. Thank you, Rob. Rob, what do you say to the players? They, they've been on this sticky run of form. They've seen Alan go. Um, what have you been saying to them today, just to try and lift morale a little bit? Um, well, we, you know, we're, we're preparing for the West Ham game, so we've tried to focus really on that. Um, they know how important the game is. Um, they're obviously they're obviously disappointed that, that Alan's gone. As I said, they've got a lot of respect for him as a not just as a coach but as a person. Um, but he would want them to go and perform, be as professional as possible, train and prepare properly, and get on with the game the actual match against West Ham and that's that's all that we've reiterated you know it's happened draw draw a line and let's move on but would you expect some players to be to be able to handle that better difficult just to get their head right at the moment they're professional that, that you know they've all been through changes of managers so um that, that you know most of them I would think all of them will know how to cope and get on with it in terms of of, of the season you'll, you'll have seen the the results slipping a little bit I, how frustrating has the season been for you watching on? Well, it's been frustrating for us all because I think in in all of the games we've been competitive. Um, you know, we've we, we there's probably apart from the Swansea game where we conceded a couple of early goals. Uh, in all the games we've been in them, you know, um, so it has been frustrating. The performances, uh, the, the performances, I believe have been have been of a standard that, given an even run of things, we, you know, the results could have been. Could have been a bit better. We could have we could have taken one or two more results, but that happens. So, I think it's important when when you're in this situation that, that you keep that level of performance high. You don't lose that. You don't lose the good things. Um, you know, other people. You know, you have the opposition that can affect your result and everything. But if you keep your performance levels high, 
then eventually you'll get you'll get your results, and that, that's what we're looking to do. I think anyone who saw us first half at Stoke, periods against Manchester City, for large spells at Queens Park Rangers, um, you know, performances have generally been good. We've created chances, we've scored, um, so we've got to we've got to look on them positives and keep sort of that level. A section of the fans clearly weren't happy with with Alan at Stoke. What do you need from your supporters tomorrow? Support the team. That's what supporters do, isn't it? They support the team, and I'm sure they will. I'm sure they'll they'll give the players all the back in they need. Can you understand their frustration at the way things have been going recently? Well, they're supporters and they support the club. You know, it's up to them how they do that. A lot's been made of the changes in the summer with such a lot of players coming in. Um, whoever comes in, how how big a job have they got here? Well, they've obviously got got a job on it, but they'll do it their own way. That's but how challenging you know, a job. It's a great job. It's a good job. Uh, it's challenging in the Premier League. If you're the manager of any Premier League or head coach of any Premier League t team, it's challenging. So uh, this this job's no different. I've had. Has that squad got the uh, the capability to stay in the Premier League as far as you're concerned? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What gives you that confidence? I work with them every day. I see them. I see the qualities they've got. You know, so um, there's good players here. Thank you. Good players to work with. Rob, do you find yourself in a position that you would never have envisaged when you came to the Albion? Mm. Yeah, I do. So completely out of the blue. I guess when you take any job as assistant, I think you don't envisage no. the fact that you. Well, oh, it's not something you you, you know that, that you sit and think, oh, this you know this is one scenario that, that can. I, well, I don't, and probably tell by me sitting in front of you here that it's not something I'm particularly comfortable with or, or want to do. So, um, but it's part of it. So we get on with it. There's no problem with that. We we get on with it. It's it's what you do, and uh, and as I say, it's not about me and how I feel. It's about um, about being organised and making sure we're ready to go and play at West Ham. From your own playing days, you experienced similar circumstances. Does that help you to? draw on that experience to, to hopefully make a success of a caretaker role? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I think what you do is you, you, you deal with what you know and you deal with what's put in front of you. Uh, you don't look too far. Uh, and as I say, I'm lucky here that I've got, I've, you know, I'm working with good staff that Alan put together, you know, good group of players. Um, so it's not, it's not me picking the team. It's not me doing the training. It's not me doing this. It's not me. It's, it's us as a group. And, uh, and whether it's you know for a day or two or a game or whatever, you know collectively that's what we'll do. We'll move we'll move it forward collectively. What message would you have to the Albion fans going down to West Ham on New Year's Day? But what you'd say anyway, you know, go and support the t go and support your team. That that's what it is. Go and support your team. Be as noisy as you can. And what can the fans expect from a team with Rob Kelly at the helm? Well, Rob Kelly's not at the helm. Um, you know, it's a, it's a group of people. Um, myself, Keith, Dean, the players. Everyone, you know, that will be organised, competitive, committed, and that's what we'll do. That's what we'll do. We'll, we'll go in and do our very best to to get a result for them. Good luck. Can Rob, always do with a bit final. of good luck. Thank you. One final one, Rob. If the two high-profile candidates that people are talking about don't work out, and I don't <laughs> expect you to talk about those, but would you like to put your hat in the ring for the job? I think anyone who knows me knows the answer for that question. I don't know you very well. Would no. You like to? no, no, I wouldn't. No.